Chase Selmeyer here with Kanga360 and welcome back to our tutorial on how to create logos, uh, images, or directional markers for your virtual tours. Uh, this here again is a virtual tour of downtown Lakeland, Florida and uh, we use a directional compass uh, to highlight uh, important businesses and other clients in the downtown area. So again, we're going to create this fun little logo. So here we go. Uh, first thing we've done is we've created the logo in Illustrator. Uh, you can do these in Photoshop as well, um, but I did this as a custom thing in, in Illustrator here. I've added my uh, locations, my arrows, just a kind of a generic circles, etc. I've saved this as an Illustrator file, and I've go ahead and done that before anything. Secondly, we have our uh, just have a project folder here where I've saved my downtown compass. Uh, I've also got my group image. Don't worry about these two. Uh, and this here is my raw uh, stitched panoramic photo of the downtown area. Um, as you can see, there's a black area here, which is our uh, the segment that the lens doesn't cover and also our tripod. And we're going to have to take that out first before we do anything. So go ahead and open your Pano 2 VR. You can go ahead and drag that into Pano 2 VR and open it. Um, and what we have here is we need to add a patch input first. So select patch input new patch, add, and scroll on down and you can see there again is our black hole uh, and tripod. So we're going to ex extract this uh, patch image directly from the uh, virtual tour and hit OK. Yes. As you can see here the tour will uh, load um, a patch up here in my browser exactly in my project folder. I'm going to go ahead and drag this into Photoshop and here's my patch. Now we can go ahead and do a number of ways to um, cover the, what we're missing. Uh, one of the easiest is content aware, so use your ellipse, cir ellipse circle and select the area around your, uh, your tripod. You kind of want to try keeping it a little close so there's less of an area that it has to uh, fix for you. So there you go. And then we're going to go up to Edit, Fill, Content Aware, hit OK. And voila, the content aware automatically detected some of the uh, source image around it and started to fill it in. Now, of course, we should spend some more time in here with uh, stamp tools and etc. to try to make this more smooth and uh, not so obvious that there was actually something there. Um, here's a prior piece of work that I did on the ground before we did that original stamp. Uh, still left us on this shadow, but we are covering that with uh, our compass. So. Uh, for the tutorial though, we're going to go ahead and continue, um, but yeah, just try to spend some more time here. It's really going to help set your work apart from others, and uh, you want to make that as seamless as possible. So go ahead and control save once you're happy with the way your, uh, your stamp and your patch look, and just save it under that exact same TIFF file that you open it up in. We're going to go back to our Pano 2 VR, and as you can see here, our patch panoramic window is still open. It's saying we can add that patch, so just hit OK. You want to update your patch image, your image patch, uh, yes. And now it's going to take that TIFF that we just created and uh, insert it into the image itself. And voila, our patch is now uh, covered. We now have a virtual tour with uh, the ground fixed. And next thing you want to do is go into your viewing parameters. You can change your, uh, your pan, your tilt, wherever you want the tour to virtually start. Uh, from experience, I find that using your pan is uh, perfectly fine. But when you start to tilt your images in this uh, software, um, sometimes in the final process of adding it to your virtual tour page, uh, they will look a little off kiltered as you turn around. So try to keep your tilt at a um, bare minimum of zero. Just about there, see I got zero, but again my pan I can still adjust. Um, you can also adjust it with these arrows here if you'd like to go different directions to try to keep that. But if you do do it freehand, try to keep your tilt um, at a zero. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put that back to zero and hit OK and update. All right, now that we've got the patch and our, um, our, our, start, our start point um, accomplished, we're going to go ahead and create the equal rectangular. So go to New Output Format, Transformation, and Add. Uh, create equal rectangular. Size is 6,000 by 3,000. And our format is a JPEG. Um, I like to crank this up to the highest it'll go. Get uh, the best image quality I can and hit OK. And it's going to ask us if we want to extract this output file and we are going to do that. Okay, and there you have it, um, our panoramic of downtown Lakeland.
Now, of course, you can go ahead and upload this to the server uh, as you'd like, uh, but we're gonna take a little bit extra time, um, add some color, add some real contrast into this, and also add our compass to the base. Okay, so the next step is to take our panoramic that we just uh, created, our equal rectangular, and we're gonna drag that on into uh, Photoshop. And we're gonna colorize it and uh, give it some life. So here's our um, image, and this is what we want it to look like, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and go to image adjustments. Uh, we can mess around with our shadows and highlights a little bit. Uh, we wanna keep our shadows down to bare minimum. Uh, boost our highlights a little bit and kind of darken the sky, bring the clouds and the uh, blue sky out behind it. So you can see here, bring it out. Uh, maybe post my shadows up to just under 70%. Our next step then will be to adjust our um, curves, okay? And uh, we're going to bring a little bit back down in the black, and this will give us some nice contrast between the, uh, the colors. Um, the darks and lights, so a little S curve as so. So you can see here as I take it on and off the preview, we're getting a little bit more contrast. The bricks are starting to stand out a little bit more. Um, the sky is popping. And go ahead and hit OK there again. And one last step up in our adjustments here is we're going to hit the hue and saturation, and uh, we can bring our, our master saturation up to about Oh, four or five, but then I'm going to go in and individually and change my greens, my blues, and other uh, dominant colors that are in the scene. So I just bring my greens up a little bit. Again, messing on and off, clicking on and off with the preview to kind of see what you've just accomplished. Uh, moving around the scene, you can hold space bar uh, while you drag and move the uh, image. Okay. Um, you can also use command um, plus or minus arrow to zoom in. Um, or out of your image as you're working in this saturation mode. Um, I can go back up to my blues here, you know, boost them just a little bit, kind of move back over to where I can see some of the sky. You can see the blues kind of coming out a little bit more. Uh, it's a little bit too fake, so I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. Okay, looks nice. So I'm going to hit OK. Uh, I'm going to zoom back out a little bit, check out my full frame real quick. And then last but not least, you want to sharpen your images uh, so you get the most out of every pixel. So you're going to go filter, sharpen, and then smart sharpen, um, and leave it at the default settings at 100%. And as you can see here, um, we're, we've got some pretty sharp images. Everything looks pretty clean, pretty, pretty clear. Uh, you can even see this guy and his walking between lunches. So that's great. I wonder where he's going. Probably Palace Pizza, but you never know. Okay, so hit OK. Uh, we're going to smart sharpen this, and then we will go ahead and save this image, Control um, or Splat S and uh, save it at 10. You don't want to go much higher than that because on a computer or any other monitor viewer, it's not gonna make much of a difference. So try to keep your file size down. We're gonna just keep it at 10. So we save and okay. And we're on to our next step. So we just saved our uh, panoramic into back into the file folder. And uh, here we are. I'm gonna go ahead now and um, we're gonna work on adding the compass into the floor of the scene. So here's our panoramic, as you just saw. I'm gonna redrag this back into Pano 2 VR, and we're gonna start basically back at the same process where we had with our patch inputs. So we're gonna make a new patch input, add our compass, and save it, and we'll be done. So new patch input, I wanna add. Now this is kind of a critical point in when you're taking your shots, that you make sure you understand the location where you're at, uh, you know where the businesses are that you're trying to surround this area with. So, for instance, I'm going to now pull my image, my patch image, and I place this in a direction, simply drew this on a piece of paper where I was standing, where the businesses were, and I notice here that Palace Pizza is facing a little bit north, a um, little bit to the east, but mostly to the north. So I'm going to go back to my patch window where I'm trying to find my patch, line up Palace Pizza, uh, which is right where my arrow is, for those of you that don't know Lakeland that well. And I'm going to see that. It looks about right with my, um, my patch here. I can see Palace Pizza is facing there. It's located about right there. And I'm just going to drag it straight down. Okay? So now I've got my, my nice patch here that I'm going to make by hitting OK. And that patch will go into the same project file folder that we've been working in. Um, which one was it? 
it was this one, okay? So I'm gonna drag that into Photoshop. I'm gonna copy, um, or you can copy and paste that, or you can drag your Illustrator file directly onto the Photoshop icon and open it. Hit okay. And it opens up here with uh, no backgrounds. Splat A, Splat C, Control Copy, and we're gonna drop it right on top of our patch. Splat T for transform, Control T. I could drag, make this bigger, scale it. And again, I'd spend some more time cleaning up your original patch image, but for time's sakes. Okay. Now I want to add a little contrast between the actual image itself and the ground that it's above. So I'm going to take my uh, circle tool, my ellipse tool, and draw a circle over the virtual tour icon. And I'm going to organize the layers over here on the right, and I'm going to drop it below my layer 1. I'm going to thin out the opacity to about 30%. And then I'm doing double click on my layer one, which is my, my logo, my image. I'm gonna add some drop shadow to it, give it some distance, make it feel like it's floating above the ground a little bit. Um, you know, again, giving it some depth of field. And then I'm gonna add a bevel and bows to give it a little bit of shape, all right? It's gonna give us these little round corners and edges um, that kind of define it and make it a little bit nicer. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay, and um, I'm going to mess with my opacity, bring my opacity of the actual image and the logo itself down. Uh, probably just put about just 90%. Again, we want it to feel like it's not directly an image uh, specifically on the ground, but it's something that we've added uh, for this effect. Uh, so that looks great. We're going to go ahead and go to our images, um, or excuse me, our layer. Uh, you want to flatten your image. It's going to add all your layers into one, uh, one layer. Hit a splat S, control save, file save, at, uh, file save, however you want to do it. Uh, again, under that same TIFF image that our Pano 2 VR created for us a moment ago. I go back to Pano 2 VR once my patch is all ready, logo is in place, and I hit OK. It asks you to update your image patch, and you say yes. And great, now we can see that our actual uh, compass has been added to the uh, virtual tour patch. I can even go back into my patch area and look at it give it a check, make sure I'm pointing to the right directions. There's Mun Park, Explorations 5 is down there, Harry's is over here, um, and we're in a great, great um, space and a new tool for marketing. And that is all she wrote. So I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial on how to create logo images for your virtual tours. Um, make sure uh, once you are back again in Pano 2 VR that you do do the transformation export, okay? Uh, you do need to create your equal rectangular one last time uh, 6,000 by 3,000 JPEG at 100%, okay? And you're going to get a gorgeous little panoramic virtual tour just as this. So, again, thank you for uh, watching our virtual tours today. This is uh, Chase Selma with Kanga360, and uh, check back next week as we work on uh, some new stitch methods for aerial virtual tours and uh, how to uh, get the uh, most advantage on a cheap budget. All right, thanks, guys.